Hello, it's Scott Manley, and what seems like an eternity, we finally have Kerbal Space Program 0.16. It also seemed to take an eternity to actually download it, but uh, eventually we have it. So the first thing to notice is the, the new capsule, which is larger and contains three people, whereas the sm there's a smaller capsule, which only contains one. Uh, the masses on these are slightly different. So the large capsule, although it contains three people, is five times as heavy. And similarly, when uh, I look at the other parts in the game, as I try to assemble this rocket, I find that uh, many of the other parts have changed. There's a lot of new items. One, one of the interesting ones I like is the scaffolding that lets you support a vehicle prior to launch. The, they've basically redesigned the whole fuel system so that it is now based off of or the mass or the fuel is entirely dependent on the mass of the object. So uh, something which has a specific start and end mass uh, that will tell you how many fuel units are in it. The engines now all burn um, according to specific impulse values. So um, that's more realistic. Also, if you go in and look at the, the values for all these engines, you'll see that they have different thrust values depending upon whether they are firing at um, firing at ground level in one atmosphere or whether they're flying at firing in orbit and this is of course like real rockets which have lower thrust due to external atmospheric pressures they have they modify the shapes of the bells the exhaust bells on rockets so that they work better at low altitude for example in the first stages and then later stages will have bells designed for um, operation in a vacuum. Now, they haven't got that level of differentiation here, although it would be perfectly possible for a modder to add it in. Uh, of course, the Aerospike, which is my favorite engine, is has no such dependency. Um, looking as well, having played around with it for a while, it does feel that a lot of the parts have been nerfed. I mean, the small engine, which I have been very uh, leaning heavily on, let's say, for my um, for my minimal rockets is basically nerfed so badly that you can barely launch um, you can barely launch any sort of vehicle at all with it anymore and given that it actually mass gets lower thrust per mass ratio I doubt I'm going to see myself using it much but uh, yeah so we've got building ourselves a basic uh, mercury mission here we have a, the aero spike and we'll just take this into orbit and so here we are in orbit, easily enough, 100 kilometer orbit. And of course, the big new feature that everyone's been waiting for, well, a lot of people have been waiting for, and certainly that's what they've been working on, is EVA. So I click on Jeb's portrait, and he jumps out onto the side of the rocket there. Now, uh, if I had decided to fit ladders and stuff, then I would have more places to grab on. But instead, I, uh, I'm just going to let go. There I am, floating around there. Fortunately, every uh, Kerbal astronaut comes equipped with a Kerbal rocket pack. So this is just like a RCS system that lets us maneuver around in space. It's kind of camera dependent with uh, the astronaut points his feet downwards always. And uh, it's pretty easy to maneuver if you've used RCS, although, you know, it might have been nice if they kept the RCS keys. But yeah, I'm just going to fly around this rocket and ins inspect it. Easy enough flying over uh, the planet in nothing but um, our suit between us and deep space, traveling at two kilometers per second, but it seems so serene the way we float around. Now, uh, rocket packs do have limited fuel. You can right-click on the Kerbinaut to see what how much fuel is left. And you can also, well, also the other thing to note is that when you're in the suit, there is no instrumentation. The only real instrumentation is the altimeter and the vertical velocity indicator. You use, lose the nav ball, which means you don't get any clue as to how fast you're going. But yeah, let's uh, try and take this thing back inside. Might take a couple of efforts. Meanwhile, I shall uh, drink this beverage, which I have, a chilled... Um, 5 a.m. 5 a.m. Saint IPA by Brewdog, some excellent beer there from Scotland. Iconoclastic amber ale. Anyway, yeah, the the well, where is the um? Okay, where is the hatch? The hatch is now on. Ah, darn. Okay, this rocket is spinning a little too much. Um, it's almost as if nobody is flying it right now. 
Now, obviously, when you have multiple Kerbals on board, you can leave a couple of guys on and uh, they'll still be able to fly the rocket and, you know, potentially strand the astronaut in orbit. I don't think there's any, um, there's no limited oxygen at this time. The, the rocket pack is not enough to um, stop your falling on the planet Kerbin, so you can't soft land with it, unfortunately. Uh, it'd be nice to have a parachute as an option. You know, I can see it in the future being able to take the astronauts and fit out their gear as well. There we go. Just try to get round, get back inside. Just cruising. What, what a beautiful view it is up here, I'm sure he's thinking. Hmm. There's the door. You can see the tiny, tiny, tiny ladders on it. Let's, um, um, oh, yeah. Ugh. Yeah, I really wish I, I had mapped the keys for the EVA to be the same as the keys for the RCS. It would have probably connected my muscle memory a little more. I mean, the nice thing is that the rotation is just handled by the mouse, which makes a lot more sense. Uh, it's a lot easier. He, he will auto control the rotation, so you won't find your astronaut spinning away because uh, you're totally inept. There we go. Getting close. Getting close and then press F to grab. That's us on the side and F to get back on board. And that's us. Now we have a bit of fuel left. This is a decent rocket design. Um, the building a three-man rocket is a little harder, but I think I've got enough fuel that I'm going to take this out to uh, one of the moons. So let's start with uh, Minmus because it has lower gravity. Maybe we can land on it and come back. Who knows? Anyway, I'll see you out there in a minute. And here we are out in orbit around Minmus, just circularizing. And uh, yeah, we got a little bit of a fuel tank left, and uh, we probably could land and maybe even return on that, but we know that we need the spacecraft to return uh, because we have to be in the capsule. So let's try um, exploiting the new features of the game and uh, landing via EVA. We're at uh, 360 kilometers up, so what we want to do is try and use the instrumentation, or use we want to try and land without instrumentation, basically. Um, so, here goes nothing. It's a good thing that this is Jebediah doing it. I, I wouldn't have anyone else performing this daring task, huh? Of course, Jebediah is one of those old-school pilots that can no doubt fly by the seat of his pants. The question is, has he ever flown a spacecraft this small before? Yeah, we're pretty much going to have to take a look at landmarks in the sky to figure out what our retrograde burn and everything is. I, I suspect that rendezvous is going to be really um, hard if I'm going to return. But yeah, we can use in this case a uh, Kerbin as a landmark because we know what vector that lies around. Um, when we're coming, when we're at the high end, we can use that as a retro burn, and at the low end, we can use it as our um, direct burn. So yeah, here's Jeb flying across the surface of Minmus like uh, the Superman that he is, or the Super Kerbal that he is. Coming down, we're below 10 kilometers. We have no idea what our speed is, although we know that our vertical velocity is about 100 meters per second. I mean, based on guesswork, we're probably coming down at around 250 to 300 meters per second, but that is entirely guesswork based upon my experience with uh, other spacecraft. So we want to probably be facing backwards along the orbit vector as we try to land. So I'm going to Try to aim that way most of the time and then just hold down W to kill the lateral velocity. Now you see the suit uh, is running out of fuel. Now I'm probably going to use more fuel on the descent than I am on the, the ascent simply because you want to land softly. Um, but but, um, blah, blah, blah. but takeoff is, is a little easier because you just burn full on all the way. So even though I get below 50%, I'm not giving up hope on getting at least this guy into a rescue orbit. Although, um, probably I will send a rescue ship because that will be more interesting if we can build a three-man land or have it and get one of the guys to get out first. Just hope that uh, the oxygen supply isn't limited. So yeah, down to uh, four kilometers. So I'm killing my vertical velocity a little. You can see the fuel is when this pack is running down. I, I think I'll be able to land. I'm just don't think I'll be able to get back into orbit and rendezvous with the capsule. Ah well, 
there'll be more trash. Maybe, yeah, maybe what I'll do is I'll I'll pick up the I'll land and pick him up and then fly him back to his spaceship so we can come home. That would be the the proper way to do things. So here we are. We're down to three kilometers and still sliding backwards across the planet at some rate of knots. We're got a little. I think we've probably got our lateral velocity under control now. We're just basically going to be holding W to slow ourselves down as much as possible. We don't want to overdo it a little. That would waste fuel. Yep. Then we're we're definitely on a landing trajectory. <laughs> <laughs> down to 1600 meters you know now now once we get close it's a whole lot easier to navigate you know the, without the instrumentation it's a lot easier um it's a lot easier just to see what's going on even though we have no more instrumentation we can um just because simply because we're much closer to an object we can much more easily gauge the actual motion so uh, it becomes more natural yep just killing my vertical velocity a little. I'm probably burning too much fuel controlling my vertical descent when I should just be slowing down as much as possible. There we are. We're down to about 500 meters and just descending relatively quickly. And technically, I don't know if I've mentioned this, but it, he's in a suit. You know, we could probably land on the mountaintop and be fine. Uh, and that would actually be more efficient because those are further from the the center of mass of the planet but uh it'll be easier to rendezvous with him without having to walk several hundred kilometers across the surface of minmus getting really close now killing that velocity oh we get a bit of a side slip and oh beautiful just just land and there we are Gemini kerman hero kerbinot look at him putting away his jetpack and jumping for joy rising 10 meters into the air on this low gravity planet. No doubt if we are going to try and launch back into orbit, we should uh, jump first. It will help with the Delta V. Yeah, nice. They're running around in slow-mo, enjoying the vast open ice plains on this distant planet. But yeah, I hope you enjoy it because you're going to be stuck here until I send a rescue craft. I don't think I'll be able to get you into orbit. But I will be back, I promise. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.